Thanks for staying with us. Um, May Dugri, the capital of Borno State, is facing its worst flooding in 30 years due to the rupture of the allowed dam. Thousands of homes have been submerged, with over 200,000 people affected. The government and emergency services are working to evacuate trapped individuals, mostly women and children. Evacuation efforts are focused on severi severely impacted areas like Gamboru Market and Custom Area, while dead bodies are being removed. The response in the, this, to the disaster, Vice President Kashim Shatima has promised 50 trucks of rice to eight flood victims, sparking mixed reactions from Nigerians. Many are concerned about the efficiency of relief distribution, questioning if this aid will adequately address the crisis. The Vice President emphasized that the government is working on additional support for the affected communities. To discuss this uh, with us here, our guest this morning is Mr. Desmond Majekudumi, and he's an environmentalist, and uh, he'll be talking to us about this. Good morning, and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Good to be with you. Okay, let's hear your comment on what is happening in Bornu. A lot of places are submerged now, and the reason, apart from the fact that there was water, there's, there was rain and all that, the reason is that the dam in Alao has collapsed. Let's hear your comment. Well, we saw it coming. In fact, we saw this coming 40 years ago. When I say we, I'm talking about the World Meteorological Organization under the auspices of the International Panel for Climate Change, which is one of the organizations under the United Nations. We have been told very, very clearly that if we continue to doing the massive amount of pollution that we are doing as humanity in general, of course, Nigeria is a part of it. We would have global warming and global warming would cause much heavier rainfall. It's, um, it's, it's, it's the simplest of science. I, I, I love this in my mother's kitchen, that when, when you add heat to water, you get to the water evaporating, more heat, more evaporation, okay? So we're having far more heat on the oceans of the world, on the rivers, on the lakes, and everything, you're going to have a lot more evaporation. You're going to have much heavier rain. And this is exactly what we're experiencing. And definitely our heart goes out to the poor people of that place because this one was very, very sudden. And they hadn't prepared enough for it at all. The dam that uh, collapsed or partially collapsed from what we're hearing, they knew it was coming. So why were measures not taken to ensure that this dam, which can only hold a certain amount of water, was able to do what it's meant to do, which is to safeguard the people downstream. So it is most, most unfortunate. Having said that, it's very encouraging to see senior members of government, including the vice president and the minister for environment, going there, walking through the floods. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of photo op. But at the, at the same time, they, they went there and they, they got a little feel for what the people are going through. Our hearts certainly go out to those people because it is the most horrendous thing. When, when water, massive amount of water just come and overtake your house, carry your children, the next thing your children have disappeared, or you hear them screaming because they oh, oh, terrible, terrible, terrible thing. But we knew it was going to come. Why did we not prepare? effectively for it. And having said that, there's a lot more that is definitely going to come. Whether it's going to be this year or next year, or the next five years, you can be 100% sure it's going to come because the global warming is continuing. So it's, it's, it's like a huge indictment, not just on us as Nigerians, not just on this incumbent government, it's a huge indictment on the whole of humanity. Because nature is telling humanity that I'm going to fight back. You see, in 2015, the Secretary General of the United Nations, he said at a conference that they had in Paris, it's quite a famous conference, it's called the COP21 conference in 2015 in Paris, where all the leaders of the world got together, including our own president. And they agreed that they were going to reduce the pollution, particularly of the CO2, 
which has been emitted in the hundreds of millions of tons. We all agree. And the Secretary General at that conference, he said, mankind is waging war against nature, and this is suicidal. Because nature always fights back, and she is doing so with more fury and vigor. 2015, and we agreed, okay, ah, ah, this is really terrible thing, all this pollution that's causing this type of problem, massive flood in one area, a uh, huge uh, forest fire in another area, drought in another area, and then the flood even comes back, that area that had drought uh, maybe two, three years ago, massive flood. Uh, in fact, the kind of rain that's falling now is not even rainfall, it's rain bomb. Uh, so everybody agreed in 2015 to reduce the emissions. And they signed, ratified the agreement by 2016. Everybody had to agree we're going to reduce this emissions. Yeah, 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 definitely. By 2022, the emissions had never, ever been so high. Uh -huh. And 2023 was the hottest year humanity has ever recorded in human history. And even when you go back into prehistory, because there's a way of taking ice samples, and when they analyze those ice samples, they can have a rough idea of what the various uh, mixture of gases in the atmosphere would have been, and what those gases would have caused in terms of temperature. The highest temperature ever recorded 2023, despite, despite all our leaders agreeing that they're going to reduce the pollution that's causing the high temperature. So, there's a huge question mark, not just on our leaders here, not just on Nigerians, but in human beings, in humanity in general. Why are you still continuing to do this thing? And guess what? People have already answered the question. <laughs> Money. Because our whole social economic system has been so geared towards prioritizing profit, worshiping the money. And by default, that means, you know, we're addicted to those things that the money gives us. And in all fairness, in all fairness, money answers a lot of things. But when you have too much of money, it's answering too many things. When you're addicted to those things, then you're going to have a problem. And we're talking about, you know, addicted to sense gratification. So the challenge is, it's a simple thing. We're prioritizing profit ahead of people, ahead of the planet. Despite the fact that this prioritization of profit ahead of people is causing catastrophic consequences because it is damaging nature, which is our life support system. Nature in her delicate balance of different aspects gives us everything obviously that we need to stay alive and in this particular case we're talking of the atmosphere the balance of gases in the atmosphere it's delicate there is very very specific ratios the carbon dioxide has its own ratio the methane has its own different gases it's a it's a miraculous combination okay and what are we doing we're wrecking that system because we are prioritizing the profits and guess what apart from wrecking nature's system this pollution, it's killing millions of people every year. At least four, maybe even up to seven million people die prematurely because of the pollution of the emissions that come when we're burning this product that we're using so much for energy and transportation. And it's clear and obvious. <laughs> if, if I bring a generator into your studio, a small walker pass my, my neighbor generator, uh, will you allow me to spark it in the studio? No, of course not, because it's poisonous. So prioritizing profit over people. Hmm. This is what the armed robber does too. <laughs> he thinks his money is more important than his life. So it is nature telling us, wake up, call, wake up, call. The people of my degree, our heart really, really goes out to you, and we hope and we pray that the necessary amelioration measures are taken. Uh, and those measures need to be taken by the leadership, okay, who also have to take cognizance of certain basic fundamental laws that govern life. And these are okay. the laws of action begetting reaction. Okay, um, well, 
it has happened. The flood has come. And the vice president said that uh, even the, the presidency has had a road map of how uh, they're going to deal with this. But whatever the volume of this water was, whatever the volume of this disaster was, was unprecedented. And we do hope that if it happens in another place that is not the vice president's state, because the vice president is from Borneo State, if it's not in his state, we're hoping that the kind of response that uh, we are getting now for Borneo State will also be uh, directed uh, there too. Uh, but what are the things that they can do because if the roadmap that they have, if, if the solution that they had is overwhelmed now, this disaster is more than that, which means there are some things that they may not have put into that. Um, so what are the things that you think can be done so that we will prevent at least the flood of this magnitude, even if it will come, but of this magnitude, what can we do to prevent it? And if they are trying to also give some kind of palliatives, what kind of palliatives will that be to those communities? Apart from rice, every, every solution in Nigeria now is tied to rice. Everything is about rice. In fact, in, in the social media, we are seeing our president being called rice kimono. So we don't know what other solution he can bring. We don't know. So just advise what can be done to prevent this kind of disaster of this magnitude and then when it does happen, what are the immediate things that the government or the leadership, as you put it, can do to make sure the people get some kind of respite? <laughs> no, it's very fundamental. It's very, very deep questions. You know? And uh, well, the response to, to rice kimono is a response we give from rice kimono. Mm -hmm. And that is under pressure, all the people under pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the people of this great <laughs> nation, Nigeria, have never been under kind of pressure that they're under now. True. And it is an indication of our resilience. This this nation, this Niger area as it's called, has some of the most incredible people in the world. And that's just one of the multiple of blessings that is here. It's it's here under our soil. It's here between our ears. We are incredible people. And I do believe that we are also extremely powerful people spiritually. We, we have an innate recognition of the spiritual aspect of life. I've given lectures in different parts of the world, uh, to different uh, ethnicities, and there are some places in the world, I, think I won't mention the name of that particular country, but uh, some people call it a great thing. And you ask them, okay, how many of you believe that there is an almighty God? You'd be surprised. Less than 50% of the audience will raise their hand and say, we acknowledge that there is an almighty God. Despite the fact that one of the reasons why this country was able to become so advanced and, you know, such a great uh, uh, sanctuary for her people, so many social services and so on, was because their forefathers had tremendous belief in God Almighty. Ask the same question in lectures in Nigeria. How many of you, the whole room, 99% who raised their hand? Yes, of course, we know there is a God. What kind of question is that? You know? And this is very encouraging. And why I'm alluding to this is because in reality, all the solutions to the various uh, issues that you are blind. And, you know, these are major issues. These, these people have gone through, you know, this terrible, terrible, catastrophic situation. And it could even happen again. Some palliative measures have been taken, but uh, the right preventive measures obviously weren't taken. This could happen in other locations, as you alluded to. It's very, very possible. We're just coming into the peak of the, the second aspect of our range. It's very, very possible. So, it is worrying, indeed. However, however, as we do believe that there is an almighty God, we refer to his various scriptures. And in Nigeria, we're talking of the Holy Bible, we're talking of the Holy Quran. And they are in complete agreement in many, many areas, particularly one fundamental area. And this is a message to the leadership, particularly in government, 
but also to a great extent in the corporate sector, that they better listen very carefully and believe what they hear from their scriptures. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about retributive justice. The scripture I'm more familiar with is the one from the Holy Bible that says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. Retribution. In the Holy Quran, it is called Kifara. Kifara. Very, very clear. There is no ambiguity. You can even go into other scriptures from other religions that we don't necessarily follow, but millions and millions of people do. The Bhagavad Gita, they call it karma. And if you don't even want to refer to scripture, then I will tell you, as somebody who has been a farmer for the last uh, over 40 years of my life, I started a farm here on the Lekki area, Lekki Peninsula area, and it's called Mufasi Farm. It was a farm before, but it's now a nature farm. I guess what? <laughs> when I plant cassava, I know they harvest cocoa yarn. Uh -huh. And if I plant rice, I know they harvest cassava. What you sow is what you reap. So, leaders, you have a huge responsibility upon your shoulders. And if you don't do the right thing in the right way, as effectively as you can, even if it means staying awake 18 hours a day for the next few months, you better ensure that no more lives are lost or you minimize it. And the amelioration measures come into those people's lives to give them succor and comfort so that you shall not be victim of sowing a seed that shall surely bring a repercussion into your life and into even the life of generations on board. Because this is the fundamental law. It operates in physics. Every action begets a reaction. It operates in the metaphysics, retribution, kifara. So this is what I am admonishing the leadership for. It is very important. If you can't do it just out of love and care and affection for the people that you're serving, because the job description is civil servant. Okay? You're here to serve the civilian society, whether you believe it or not. But even if you're not doing it out of care and compassion, which I do hope and I do pray, and I, I, I suspect maybe some of you are, then do it. For your own safety, for the safety of your own soul. Because it will come back to you if you don't do it right. There's an emergency going on. People's lives are being lost. Children are being swept away. Mothers and fathers, they're hearing their children screaming, screaming as the water is drowning them. Ah, ah, and we swept away. And if this is happening because of your neglect, and you're in a to serve the people effectively, the reaction will come to you. Otherwise, the Holy Bible is lying. The Holy Quran is lying, which they are not. They are telling us fundamental truth. Of course, there's a lot of measures, practical things that can be done. The dams have to obviously be very, very well maintained. They have to be well monitored. If there's too much water coming out of the dams, then that water has to be released in the right way. Those streams and rivers that the water is released into or just comes into naturally, those streams and rivers have to be protected. That is the river banks. There has to be vegetation there. Trees that are in those vicinities must not be cut down because the forest, they do a very wonderful job of protecting those streams and rivers through their root zone so you don't have uh, terrible erosion and uh, all kinds of, uh, of uh, sand and so on falling into the bottom of that river and the stream and it can't do its uh, designated natural work because nature also has her way you will have heavy rains from time to time nature has her way of ensuring that those flood waters will be evacuated by the streams and the rivers but if they're going to allow erosion to spoil the capacity of the streams and the rivers to do this then you're going to have the floods and then you can have what they call small downstream dams which you can even use for irrigation and that's a very very necessary thing now because we're going to have some very dry seasons don't be surprised if that location in uh, in Bono State, some of those locations there that were flooded, don't be surprised if in a couple of years they have complete droughts. Yeah, because climate change. 
Again, we're causing this aberration against nature. Yes, 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 you know. We're fighting nature. You want to fight nature? Come on, come on. When you hear a crack of thunder, crack and big, 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 and it shakes your whole place. And that's just one lightning bolt that causes that. This is the force that you have the audacity, the foolishness to think that you can fight. And nature is telling us that, hmm, we're fighting you back if you continue this way. Live in harmony with me. Follow scripture again. We're put here to replenish the earth. Replenish our life support system. Our children's life support system. And this is what we're doing for our children's future. So it's a big wake up call. And I do believe that we shall arise to the call and do the right things. The solutions are there. The practical solutions. We know what to do. We know what to do. Reforestation. Protect the river banks. Ensure that the dams and all those places are well maintained. We know what to do. But now, we need to do it. Or we will betide you who is in the position of leadership and we don't do it. <laughs> God is almighty. And he is a very loving God, but he's also a very vengeful God. <laughs> don't bring the revenge of almighty God upon you. Ah, there's so many terrible things that can happen. I, 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 hope, I hope that these people fear God uh, because uh, they are sworn in by, with the Bible or the Quran and they still do what they do. That's why some people are even advocating that they should begin to swear by Ahmadi Oha and Ogun and all the, the other gods that they may fear. But that may still not be the solution as it is. But we do hope that um, uh, they are going to listen to the cry of the people. They are going to have sympathy on the people. They are going to do the needful and make sure that uh, at least we live. Even if we, we are suffering, let us be alive and suffer the suffering. Maybe we will find a way around it and not just lose our lives unnecessarily. We, this is how we, uh, we will wrap up today, uh, sir. We thank you so much, Mr. Majek Kudomi, for coming on the program. Okay, it's my pleasure. Sow the good seed and you get the good reward. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. We've been talking with Mr. Desmond Majekudumi, an environmentalist, warning us that uh, human activity uh, is largely responsible for what is happening to us uh, right now. And we're hoping that the people who are at the helm of affairs will do what they're supposed to do and make sure uh, we protect our environment. And then when we protect our environment, whoever is responsible for anything, like taking care of the dam, should also stand up to their responsibility. We'll take an, a short break and then we'll, when we return, we'll be looking at our second hot topic. Stay with us.